Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to cover how I created and sold a blog for six figures in just under 15 months. My name is Casey, and I'm the founder of bloggingguide.com. This video serves as a part two or a follow up to my previous niche site two case study in which I documented the first 12 months of this site's growth from January 2023 to December of 2023. In this video, I'll focus on January, February, and March of 2024, the earnings, and basically the actual sale of the website. I think that you'll find lots of valuable tidbits in this video, and I hope you enjoy. So next, I'm going to go through the website timeline, just kind of touching on the major events from when the website was uh, initially just an idea all the way to my recent sale of it. And for reference, if you want to see how I did the posts in more detail, check out the previous video. Um, I'll link that below in the show notes. This will be more of just an overview of that initial digital publishing portion with an emphasis on the actual sale. But um, so yeah, yeah, the idea first came to me in about November 2022, and that's when Chat GPT was released. So basically, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew that I needed to experiment with the AI content to stay you know, on top of my game and to basically be able to continue working as a writer. Uh, it was, and it's just a neat topic in general. As someone who likes technology, of course I was going to give it a try. So. I spent most of December planning and mapping out the 750 initial articles that I was going to write. And again, these were articles very well organized and very, uh, for this niche, very topically robust. They really did cover the topic, this sub niche in its entirety. And that was the goal of creating this was to write only as much as the site naturally was conducive to covering not a single article more. Um, so I started publishing in January, 2023. And at this point, Google hadn't made it clear if AI was even acceptable at all. So, uh, and I wanted the site to get off to a really good start. So for this, just this very first month, I published 29 posts and these were written by me or some of the freelance writers on my team. And this definitely was an advantage and something I'm still doing on my other niche sites. By launching with posts that you yourself personally write, you can really establish the site's direction, what it's about. Uh, if, if you are going to outsource later, it lets you sort of give them a rough idea of the voice that you want the site to sort of convey its message to the audience and and after January I pretty much uh, went full into using koala uh, I basically would give it the seed keyword it would generate the first draft I would go through all the many steps it took to edit the content and while this did take hours at a time it still was quicker than writing these articles. These were somewhat difficult to write articles. Um, and for whatever reason, maybe because of the, the subject itself, doing a tech blog worked pretty well when using uh, various AI tools. And I just kind of kept grinding it out from there. Um, I just relentlessly full time, you know, more than 50 hours a week was doing this January, February, March, April. And then come May, I had seen just enough growth where I hit the 50,000 session threshold, meaning I could apply to Mediavine. And luckily for me, I was very familiar with the Mediavine process because I have other sites on there. Um, but yeah, I, I was able to apply and I got approved in about a week or a little less actually. But this was significant because this is how I would monetize the site going forward. And 
this was, yeah, the entire source of income for the site. A lot of people assume that this is an affiliate site when they see the big numbers, and that makes sense. But no, this is a pure uh, display ad, you know, revenue generating site. So the site only started earning in May, but it quickly ramped up as the traffic went up. And fast forward uh, another two thirds through the year, toward the end, uh, December, the site basically reached sort of its peak um, around 22,000 per month in December of 2023, which is amazing. Like that vastly exceeded my expectations. And again, if you want to see the play by play, you can watch the previous video where I go through this. But um, yeah, 22,000 was really exciting. Uh, I would have guessed the site probably couldn't have ever in the first year possibly done more than 10,000. So just blew away my expectations. After December, I had finished the original 750 articles. I'd actually gone beyond that. And I'd also done a number of custom pages. So in total, I would reach between posts and pages, somewhere between 900 and 1,000 uh, posts or pages. But I had finished everything I wanted to cover, and there were a couple obvious monetization methods that weren't being utilized because I'm just using ads, which is generally the lowest sort of form of monetization. If all else is equal, having affiliate products would be more valuable. Uh, starting your own products that you could sell on a higher margin would be more valuable. Starting like a membership, e-commerce store. These are all the things that the site needed to take it to the next level. I had already relentlessly tweaked all the features about the theme, the articles, and basically optimized the RPM. I mean, it was throughout this period easily hitting $50. So there wasn't much more to do on that front. So I made the decision to sell the site, mainly because I had taken it as far as I could go with it without having to sort of double down and totally reinvent a new, you know, business model. Um, my background's in growing traffic. I love display ads because they're passive or about as passive of income as you can get. So I decided to see, you know, I can keep the site going and it'll just keep throwing off money, but why not try to shop it around and see if anyone's interested? So at first I reached out to a few different people um, privately, just different brokers, different uh, aggregators that I knew owned a number of sites and periodically would buy them and hold them in a portfolio. There was a little bit of interest, but the site was generally considered too young. There wasn't enough revenue history. The revenue history was impressive, but it was zooming up so quickly that it was very difficult to value. So I made the decision ultimately to list it through a, a broker. And ultimately, I used Empire Flippers. Um, I like that they kept the site's URL private, except for qualified buyers who've demonstrated they have the financial wherewithal to purchase the site. And ultimately, yeah, the experience went extremely smooth. This is not an easy time to sell sites. It's definitely more of a buyer's market. And they still were able to find that elusive, perfect buyer. So I give them a lot of credit. And then, let's see, in February, the sites, I decided to list it. There, It does take a little while for Empire Flippers to do their due diligence. So at the me beginning of February, I was accepted into Mediavine Pro, which basically means that I had just reached 100K in display ad earnings in the past 12 months. Um, this was exciting though, and really important because when you reach Mediavine Pro with a site, you're now able to onboard an additional site at a lower 25,000 sessions versus the standard 50,000. So 
parallel to this, I was also submitting some of these sites that I had sitting in the 20 or 30,000 session range. So I was able to add a few more sites to Mediavine. So while they weren't earning a ton, just because they're not the highest traffic, it was a big deal. And then about midway through uh, February, they approved the listing. So I knew it was going to be listed and they have a 60 day exclusivity period. So I knew it was going to be listed basically through at least April. I was planning on keeping it up though, probably until June before, you know, pulling the site. Um, but yeah, so then February, later in February, uh, now that the site's actually listed, I started getting questions about the site and the first few offers. The first few questions and offers didn't give me a ton of confidence. They were either people clearly looking for just a really good discount on a site that was cash flowing amazingly, kind of trying to take advantage obviously of the the fear that they must assume I have as the seller that my site might crash any day which again is always possible with Google's volatile algorithm updates. So that is true. But this site had survived all the algorithms in the past year and a half. So I wasn't specifically concerned about that. So I wasn't going to take, a, you know, let's say, and to be clear, I signed a non-disclosure agreement with this site and just to respect the the buyer. I'm not going to disclose the actual price or the site itself. But let's say just based on like the last few months of revenue in the 20k range, then there's almost no cost with this site, a few hundred dollars a month. If somebody wanted to make me an offer, let's say of a hundred thousand dollars, maybe that sounds good to some people, but <laughs> this site would make that back in under five months at the current rate. And it was actually growing too. So, I mean, probably closer to four months. So when you sell a site normally, and if it has longer history and all that, you tend to try to sell for about 36 X, meaning 36 times the monthly net operating income. So, I was looking for a bigger number than than a hundred thousand, but I also wasn't expecting this to, you know, be some crazy seven figure sale. I was looking for a mid six figure offer. I was flexible. Obviously, I didn't say that, but I was somewhat flexible. Um, so I dealt with a lot of questions, a lot of questions, things about like how you know, did I, they were trying to drive down the price. So they're asking like, what do you think about the deprecation of third party cookies? And I had a good answer for that because I had been using Mediavine's Grow plugin to collect first party user data during the almost the entire time I ran this site. So I not only had a list of about 5,000 email subscribers to offer, but these are 5,000 authenticated users who basically consented to first party data tracking. Nobody knows what'll happen at the end of the year, 2024, when the third party cookies are completely phased out, but it's a good hedge or as good a hedge as any, there's not many other solutions out there. So I explained this to all the, the different buyers making offers that this was sort of how I had offset that risk and that you could turn it potentially into an e-commerce store. I included a number of digital assets I had built with it. Um, I hadn't tried to sell them. I had used them as either free lead magnets or they were things I was going to sell. So those weren't priced in in terms of revenue, but I included those as a sort of a good faith showing that, you know, hey, like this is what I would do next if the site doesn't sell. But um, ultimately the site did sell. Uh, the buyer was somebody who actually reached out toward the beginning. We exchanged a couple messages. Again, just kind of going over some of these basic questions. And the way Empire Flippers works, usually you 
get these intense like meetings where it's you're on a video call you the buyer and like a mediator from empire flippers and like you can't talk price in the chat or in the video call you're just supposed to like kind of be doing due diligence sort of awkwardly sussing each other out so um i was expecting to get one of those calls or meetings set up but a lot of people were asking questions but they weren't booking calls including this buyer this buyer must have done his due diligence because he had some time he was one of the relatively early ones to unlock the listing and he made an offer and the offer was actually pretty good um i thought about i could have countered because it was less than the listing price um and i went back and forth on that but ultimately uh this was a good buyer for the site because i knew his plans and while it doesn't really matter once the site's in someone else's hands they can do whatever they want my concern was that this site had been built in a very specific way and somebody else might try to then broaden the scope of the niche to include other software platforms and topics which i could see how like somebody who has a background in seo would do but the whole strategy of the site was keeping very narrow topical authority so i didn't want someone to like immediately destroyed the site both because it was a passion project but also because even if i wasn't it was going to be their problem that's just not generally a good situation um you, you don't want to sell someone a site that's like on the verge of crashing or that you know they'll crash i mean again if they have the money they can do whatever they want with it but he told me his plan and it it checked out I mean, he basically wanted to keep the site as as is. Do a few, he had a few creative ideas for mon, for like stretching the content. But um, we basically ag- agreed on an offer. And while not part of that, I also threw out the offer of helping even write some future posts. That's the other advantage of being a writer or the operator behind the site is I can produce all the content. I can do all the custom graphics. I can tweak the site design. So I even offered beyond the normal level of support to help out. And while I haven't done that yet, the buyer had expressed some interest in that, which made me happy. I know all of you obviously want to get to the final blog stats. So here they are. In total, the site ended up with about a thousand posts and or custom pages. Uh, At its peak, it received, I believe, just under 600,000 sessions for the month. Um, Again, because of the NDA I signed, I, I didn't have access to the data at the very end, nor would I be able to disclose it. But um, I think the last month prior to me listing it was like 590 some thousand and it had gone up from there so 600,000 ish sessions and that had generated a total of a little over 100 grand in the first basically 13 months first year or so that's how I got in the Mediavine Pro and the very final month well again I'm not going to disclose the exact number it was trending up um significantly uh throughout the full month of february that's when the negotiating and stuff was going on and the final offer so while i didn't actually get to see the the final days of the month uh it would have had the same person owned it it would have finished i think pretty conservatively above 25k um i had seen temporarily at least 30-day averages that were uh, around that amount. As far as what the site actually sold for, again, I signed the NDA, so I can't say exactly. But it it was mid-six figures. You know, some of the low-ball offers that I got were like 
a hundred or two hundred thousand. And again, it'd be unrealistic to assume a site like this would sell for like eight, nine, or like a hundred thousand or even a million. It's not going to be like that. There's just not enough revenue history, even if it was getting close to 30,000 a month. So it's somewhere in between there. It was pretty much a solid mid six figure sale. Um, if you work it out because of that, though, the sort of abbreviated history, it would work out to a below average multiple. But again, a multiple is just the guideline you use to help really compare sites. This site was very atypical. It was a very short history. It grew exponentially faster than almost every other site listed beside it on Empire Flippers. And it, it was just a really unusual site. It had never been hit by an update. So it's hard to tell if this is sort of a flash in the pan or if this is truly gold, you know. So this was a tricky one for both of us, I think, to figure out what the right price was. But ultimately, we were both happy with the price. I, the buyer wired the money to Empire Flippers quickly. Um, they waived the inspection period, so I was able to get the money even faster. And yeah, we worked together actually pretty well to get the site transferred over. Um, you know, he used the hosting I recommended, and we, MediaVine was very courteous and made the process very quick. So ultimately, yeah, those are kind of the final stats. And as some of you might remember from the previous video, the cost basis for this site was about $7,500. That's what I had spent on tools, themes, AI writing credits, the initial month of freelance writers that helped me that does not include my time, which was obviously really the big cost here. But I mean, still, 7500 out of pocket for something that generated well over 100,000 cash flow uh, and sold for some multiple of that. Yeah, that's a pretty good ROI. You're not going to get that many places. So this is the earnings chart showing the last three full months before the site ultimately went into escrow. So that's November 2023, December 2023, and January of 2024. And as you can see, even though it would go up, jump up a bit uh, significantly in February, and it would appear so far in March, it had kind of plateaued. It would in terms of revenue, right around 22000 This is sort of noteworthy, though, because as any blogger knows, RPMs drop typically in January. So this site should have probably dropped 50% from December to January. Obviously, that didn't happen. It almost made the same amount in January. How does that happen? Well, the RPMs kept going up. Uh, relative to the the seasonal push. My guess is there were probably a lot of software campaigns that Mediavine was able to find or just high RPM ad opportunities. Um, the longer you have a site also on an ad network and you tweak it, you can get the RPM to go up and you increase the odds of finding somebody who the ad network might be able to pitch a longer term deal to, which will skew your rates. You won't know this, but this is the kind of stuff that you can kind of infer from the, the RPM, um, despite this time of the year. And also the traffic went up. So even if your RPM goes down, if your traffic goes up, that can offset it. So the combination of the RPM dropping only about 20%, and the fact that traffic went up about 20% meant it was basically a wash. But uh, yeah, it was, it, it, while short-lived, it was neat to see uh, 
this this dashboard in the royal blue that's that's how you know that it uh was finally in mediavine pro again this was short-lived because i would soon sell the site but uh i have to say it was it was definitely pretty cool to finally see that change from teal to royal blue that i had heard about from other bloggers so here's another earnings chart graph that i thought you guys might find interesting this is when you have multiple sites in media vine you have this little login page where you can toggle between the sites obviously i've redacted the other sites uh, and the site names of all of them too but uh you can see this one was live on media vine is what that means um in the middle of may basically and this is the last 30 days so this was the day before we entered into sort of our final negotiations and then i agreed to an offer so basically this was like the sort of the peak revenue that i saw before the site was sold and handed over and i lost access but it gives you a glimpse because this probably was the, the site is probably more or less plateaued I, I doubt it's gone up much since then although it sure could at the end of march rpms tend to spike but so that was cool even if that was just a 30 day you know a really good 30 days um yeah that's a big number twenty eight thousand some so that's just this site so again and you can also see i hadn't onboarded them all but i had got at least one of the other sites accepted in the media vine by leveraging it this site's pro status so that's the the line below it i believe um so now there's in this shot that there was there were only four there's now five and possibly soon six sites that i have on media vine um even factoring in this this site which is sold and no longer included there but you'll notice just some high level stats the 30-day rpm in february being 49.97 so almost 50 dollars. that's extremely high like i said i spent a, like a whole month pretty much because i was done posting in january optimizing the rpm i did everything from adjusting font size line spacing ad placement types of ads ad density you name it i tried it and i got it up from like high 30s to almost 50 so that's a big difference and you should check out my video on optimizing rpms uh, if you're curious and want to do that for your own site as you can see it wasn't the very peak in terms of traffic but it was pretty close 565,000 sessions is nothing to sneeze at but yeah this is basically just a snapshot of that site right before i had actually sold it and here's one more earnings chart graph that very few people ever show or you get to see but it's sort of neat this is basically the lifetime um view of on the left it's earnings in purple green or sessions and then on the right hand side you have rpm in that pink salmon -y color and then sessions in green so basically you can see when the site starts in may the traffic um sessions which is green on both or teal is pretty slow to go up um and bear in mind it took a while to get to this point you know that represents when the site was at 50,000 sessions it's it looks like nothing because eventually the site would you know more than like 10x that um and literally get to like 500 and then 600,000 sessions later but it still shows that for a site to grow and really make money you have to have patience um yeah you have to kind of trust in the process it it'll happen quickly you can see even at the beginning um because i was starting at a better time of the year there were actually some pretty high rpms 
that spike early in the year, I believe, is an Amazon Prime Day, if I'm not mistaken, in RPM. I wouldn't see that again until Q4, which is typically the peak. But as you can see, after the end of the year, when RPMs for everyone dropped, and mine did too, I was able to recover pretty darn well um, and kept the traffic steady. And in case you're wondering, that dip that occurs, really the only big dip is right around, it's Christmas is what that is, that shows how everybody's not online around the world for that one day. Um, but traffic significantly drops off, and that's perfectly normal. But while zooming out on the graph like this is, I mean, it's neat to see. It's important to remember that, you know, you're somewhere zoomed in, focused on a very specific part of the graph. You know, each of those like waves that you see represented by sessions are weeks. And as you see, the the range per week like the uh, keeps increasing. So at the begin, you know, they might the shape might be similar, but toward the end there, you know, it's it's bouncing pretty, even though it's consistent, it's bouncing tremendously. You know, you're having $500 days, you're having $1,100 days in the same week. But it's fairly predictable. So that's the good thing. But it's, it's interesting to look at a site like this because if you had asked me, did the graph look smooth? The answer would have unequivocally been no, not this smooth. Um, it, it felt very volatile at times. And while it wasn't hit during any of the updates, as you can see, you know, traffic did drop off toward the end of the year, even before Christmas. So I, there was an update or an unannounced update during that time. So I thought the site maybe wasn't hit, but had suffered a blow to its traffic. And it's a good example though, of why you gotta stay the course and why if you're going to sell a site, I would recommend generally doing it before you get into the high RPM season, meaning before you get to like Q3, Q4. You could argue I sold the site too early, but there was a little different time constraint this year because cookies were being deprecated at the end of 2024. So I knew there'd be some market risk and some different fears that wouldn't normally exist in Q3, Q4. So I was trying to get to market a little early. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you found this case study tutorial useful. Hopefully it gave you some ideas you can apply to your existing blog or maybe ideas for a new blog. Uh, if you want to see more content like this, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I've got some new exciting case studies planned that I'm excited to share with you. If you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you. And if you need to reach out to me, you can reach out through my website, bloggingguide.com, where I also share lots of tips, tricks, and tutorials on blogging. Or you can reach out to me directly on social media at Casey Botticello. Thanks.